Because it's going to go, listen, I just want to start off by saying I'm worried about those people in the mobile home, that implosion thing. Caladay's Heating and Air out of Western Kentucky has tried to bring our lower income residents there a little bit of a high end service. Caladay specializes in building performance and therefore tried to introduce the idea of blower door testing to people of various mobile home parks. Unfortunately, on the very first test, the blower door was set up, turned on, and the trailer imploded. That's a, that's a legitimate problem. And I think I'm glad that Bergman has gotten measured quick to add that red flag mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because I don't even know how they can afford that if, uh, I don't know, blower door testing is expensive. And yeah. uh, I've been in a lot of, I don't know about you, but legit, I've been in a lot of trailers doing service mm -hmm. over the years. And I, I, I kind of like it. I like the yeah. way it's set up a lot of times, but man, yeah. a blower door would be wasting time. I love that huge four by uh, 12 uh, duct that runs, you know, underneath the underpinning there. I like yeah. it. It's just, it's a huge duct, four by 12. And it's made out of that great aluminum metal, you know, that the rats can't chew through. So it's really nice. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, say what you may about it, but it's the only duct you can cut with scissors, which I appreciate. You can make hey, a new hole real easy. I was checking airflow the other day and I <laughs> set my anometer down and I turned on the unit and it blew my anometer out the window. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's, that's so funny. You know, we didn't even talk about like trailer fixing. This is how this show is too. None of the stuff we talked about before we even come up. And I remember, you know, you'll be sitting there at this trailer and it's downflow every time i mean i can't remember when that wasn't downflow unless it was some kind of weird configuration somebody did on their own and you would have that one outlet that's like four foot away in the kitchen and a single wide and that thing will come on and that it almost lift off the floor because oh, yeah. like like 50 percent of the airflow yeah goes into that one outlet it's a four by eight too so the velocity is high oh yeah i love it I like and the manufacturer is such a genius that they decided you know what we're going to put sequencers in and and they're all going to burn up and then we're going to add these expensive motors and you know the the new units you get like you'll you'll get a 70,000 BTU gas furnace like for a change out and you'll get the mm -hmm. furnace in and when you put it in and you turn it on the customer goes can you turn the fan down why is it so loud <laughs> it's like <laughs> you lower it all the way down and then, then you can't get the correct pressures it's like yeah, it's a catch-22. Yeah, because you put the stuff in there, and it's like, well, this one's loud. I said, well, I'm trying to get to 400 CFM per ton, ma'am. It's like, well, where are you at? 275, you know, and I'm doing my best. 270. Well, maybe we need to add some outlets. Yeah, maybe the manufacturer needs to figure their stuff out because, yeah, yeah, it don't work. And then, well, there's a whole line of stuff with that, like the package units people put on. It's like, I'll put this package unit on. It's three tons. The one 10-inch supply, I'll tap into that yeah. one run. Everything's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got a lot of those, man. And uh, what we usually do is we take the crossover pipe loose, then we mm -hmm. take and run a duck in supply, and then we tee it, and then we take and do, see if it's a double wide, you have two different ducks. Mm -hmm. What we do is we do uh, two uh, supplies on the first trunk and then two supplies on the next trunk. You can't do over 12 inch because the duck's not bigger than 12 inch, so you can't put a bigger round pipe than 12 on there. So right. but we usually do four supplies. I, yeah, I think that's, the, the times we actually put a package unit on, in an install manner, which would have been long. It wouldn't even been me. I, I used to work for my father as well before I started my company in 2009. Mm -hmm. And I, as I recall, it was a lot like what you said. You have a package unit out there and you tap into it. He would tap into it in like four locations. He would go to different locations mm -hmm. and tap into it. And it's about the only way that you could make the airflow and static pressure somewhat normal. Yeah. And, and I balance. don't even know that it was normal then. Yeah. And balance so that, you know, you don't have the same effect as that. What you just talked about, the vent closest to the furnace is blowing the hardest. The vent on the end is blowing nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's the return, which is a whole nother story. You know, you're going to make yeah. a giant filter that's slanted in the floor that has like dirt clods on it from like people walking yeah. across the grate. It's great. Yeah. Dog hairs. Take that furnace out. You make that the box there. And then the, above it, they can have a nice shelf. Yeah. That's nice. Go with that's us. Good planning. You'll have a shelf. I would hire y'all, actually, now that I hear it. Thank you. <laughs> Wake up, all my summer friends.